Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he, was, he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made him this man strong, who you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God has fulfilled what he has foretold through his prophets, and his, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins might be wiped out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in, in, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now, on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They, they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, 
Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost even. It is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight." They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he was talking to us on the road while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. and They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, what a, what a blessing it is to be disappointed in a crowd of 76, right? There were just a few short years ago, we would have been turning cartwheels for 76 uh, folks. And now I'm a little disappointed by it. And that's a great blessing to have. Uh, so I'm counting my blessings this morning. Uh, you know, we often talk about encounters with Christ, changing people, changing people in, in some very obvious ways a lot, of, a lot of times. After an experience with God, a real experience. Uh, people, people, no, one is never quite the same again, and nowhere do we see evidence of that than in the gospel lesson uh, this morning, in two different cases in the gospel lesson this morning. So, you know, every Sunday's got a nickname, and today, the nickname of today's Sunday, the third Sunday after Easter, third Sunday of Easter, is Emmaus. Sunday. And so in some years, this is a story we hear, just as we did today, about the disciples traveling on the road to Emmaus. But on the, on the second year in our cycle of readings, which we're in now, year B, we get a little more on the end of the story because it's Luke. Luke always adds a little more to the, to the story. We get a really interesting part at the end. Uh, we pick that same story up in a really neat spot, I think. We drop into the scene. It's late on Easter Day. This has all just happened this morning. Late on Easter Day, actually that night. Uh, and this story takes place as the disciples are in that upper room and they're, they're hiding They've been there for, I guess this will be their third Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This will be their third day in that room. They are afraid and they're defeated. Uh, and in the room with them, there are quite a few folks in hiding. You know, after Judas' death, but before they call St. Matthias to replace Judas, there would have been 11. But then there would have been other disciples there as well, not just the, the, tw the 12, not just the 11. And their, their families may have even been with them. And with these 11 men... Uh, people were coming to check in, but kind of quietly they're sneaking around so that they won't be caught. And we pick up the story just as two men have been finishing their testimony about what they've seen as they traveled down the road. It's only three days since the disciples have watched the crucifixion of Jesus. It was the talk of every Jew in the region, if not every Jew in the world by this point. Everyone was still reeling from the events surrounding Jesus' arrest and crucifixion, the talk of the Jewish world. Two men walked down the road talking about that. I mean, what else would they be talking about, which is kind of what they say to Jesus. And they were joined by another man who says, hey, what are y'all talking about? I imagine, I imagine Jesus' eyes twinkling a little bit like as if he didn't know what they were talking about. His eyes twinkling when he joins in this conversation. And they could not believe that he didn't know, that he was unaware of all the things that had been happening. So they start to fill him in. Uh, it's, uh, this is the way news travel in, travels in the ancient world. They told him that Jesus had been a renowned teacher, a rabbi, a mighty prophet, and a leader among the Jews, and that the high priests 
had accused him of blasphemy, and then they had actually handed him over to the Romans, the foreigners, to be executed by the Romans by crucifixion. Now that part of the story, they were just as upset about that part as they were all the, the rest of it. You know, the Romans were easily the most hated people in, in Israel, probably in the world at this point, and the Jewish priests had actually handed Jesus over to them, to the, to the Romans, to the, the foreigners, to the invaders. You know, the Jews handled these things themselves. They had a law, and they did everything they could to follow it, and the punishment for blasphemy was to be taken out by the Jews and stoned to death. Uh, that's the law. It is prescribed by Torah, period. That's it. That's all there is to it. And so to hand Jesus over to the Romans, that was beyond comprehension of most Jews. It meant that a crime had been dealt with in a way outside of God's will. The priests had not followed the will of God. They had broken the law. So as these men walked along, they're telling all of this to the stranger. They just can't believe it. They had no idea that this was Jesus. I'm not sure why. Uh, but as they continued, it grew late. And you know, in the ancient world, you couldn't just uh, send somebody out into the dark world. It was scary. There was no place for them to go. So they invite Jesus in to stay with them, to have a meal. And they gather around the table. And then Jesus picks up the bread as if he were the host. This was not his house. But Jesus picks up the bread, and Jesus blesses the bread, and Jesus gives it to them, and in, it was in that moment that they realize who he is, and then he vanishes from their sight. Now, there is an anthem that we don't sing very often, an anthem in our hymnal uh, that says, the disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And when it says the disciples knew the Lord Jesus, it's not talking about the 12 or the 11 at this point. It's talking about those two guys who were walking on the road to Emmaus. Might have been talking about us as well. The disciples know the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. When Jesus vanished from the home of these two men, they knew exactly what they had to do. And this is the part of the story that we only get in Luke. We don't get this part and all the others. Uh, they headed straight to the place where the disciples were hiding, and they knew where it was. So these, these guys were insiders, right? These were not out on the fringe. They knew where they were hiding. So they go to the disciples, and they begin to tell the rest of them what they had seen and that's where we pick up on the story. Uh, the men finished telling their, their story, and then suddenly, Jesus, even though the doors were closed, Jesus is there with them again. And at first, the disciples are absolutely sure that they're seeing a ghost. You know, you have to remember that these are fishermen, and I've never yet met a fisherman that wasn't as superstitious as fishermen and baseball players, the, the two most superstitious people on the planet to this day. Uh, you can imagine that fishermen 2,000 years ago were pretty easily convinced that this was a ghost. So Jesus asks them for some food. I guess because everybody knows ghosts don't eat. I'm not real sure, but that's what he does. He, he asks for some food. Someone produces some broiled fish. I've always kind of imagined St. Andrew in my mind pulling this greasy fish out of the folds of his tunic. Uh, here, here I happen to have some. Uh, and Jesus eats. And then he sits down with them, and he begins to do what he has always done with them, and that is to teach them. That's what Jesus has always done. He teaches them. St. Luke says he opens their minds to the Scriptures, as he still does for us today. You know, we did not really understand the Old Testament until Jesus came and put the Old Testament under the lens of his love and his crucifixion and his resurrection. One of my favorite biblical scholars says that for him, this meeting in that upper room, this very one we hear about in, in Luke, that it is one of the surest proofs of Jesus' resurrection in all of the Gospels because the disciples were in that room hunkered down, terrified, hiding. The lights were out. They're whispering. And they leave that room immediately. They leave that room on fire for the resurrected Jesus Christ. They were there because they were defeated and frightened, and they left bold and unable to conceal their joy and their fervor. There is no way that they could keep quiet 
about what they had seen anymore. They had seen him and they were willing to give their lives to tell the world about it. And in fact, most of them would give their lives telling the world about it. Either way, they either decided to risk and eventually give their lives to perpetuate one of the most elaborate hoaxes in the history of the world, or Jesus really did come and make himself known to them, one or the other. Do you know, even though they were tortured, tortured to death, not one of them, as far as we know, ever recanted their story? Not one, ever. Now, in, in science classes, I can remember learning about a principle called the law of economy. Some people call it, the, call it Occam's razor. And that is, it, it states that when you have multiple hypotheses, the simplest version, the one that makes you assume the fewest things, uh, that that's probably the right one. And it works in this case. Now, I'm not trying to stand here and prove the resurrection of Jesus Christ to you. I can't. I can't do it, and I would not waste your time trying. But I will say to you, that two things happened on the day that we read about in, t- in today's gospel. One, Jesus made himself known to the disciples by opening up the, the scriptures to them. And two, that Jesus made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. And that is exactly the same thing that he will do for us in both of those cases. It's why the two most important gatherings we have all week long are one, when we gather on Sundays to break the bread, and two, when we gather on Wednesdays to study the scripture, and on Thursday mornings to study the scripture. Wednesday nights, Thursday mornings, Sunday mornings, the breaking of the bread and the study of the scripture. You know, this story becomes even more important to us in the light of last week's lesson where we dog on poor St. Thomas, again, like we do every year. Thomas and others, Thomas was not the only one, doubted. You know, Mary Magdalene doubted too, we don't call her Doubting Mary. Uh, But they doubted. They doubted the stories that the others were telling about the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus was able to come to them in person, personally, and reassure them. But then Jesus ascended into heaven only 50 days later, and he would no longer be on this earth to appear to those who had trouble believing, those who had doubts, those who had questions. So how is it that we will know that these things are true? We tell our story, we study the scriptures, we break the bread. He makes himself known to us in the opening up of scripture and in the breaking of the bread. He promised that he would be present with us in the sacrament of his body and blood. He was then and he is now. And if you seek his face, you will find him and he will still reassure you. Come and study the scriptures with us. It's a hoot of a good time. We we do have a really good time. It's not your grandmama's Bible study. Uh, Come and break the bread and drink the cup. Tell others to come and see. Tell them our story. And he will make himself present to you just exactly the way that he was present with those disciples on the road to Emmaus. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. We pray especially for the parish of St. Mark's and St. Paul's Sewanee and the Anglican Church of Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray especially for Mary, Dick, Diane, Mary Jane, Betty, Drew, Anne, Arlene, Gianna, Carla, Rick, Nicole, Ben, Carlos, Harry, Jim, and Peggy, Linda, Sally, and Peggy. We pray also for those in service of our country especially Douglas, Jeffrey, Stephen, Cameron, Jack, John, Kurt, Christy, Christopher, Danny, Tyler, Jacob, Maggie, William Patrick, David, Allie, and Rusty. We pray for peace in the Middle East. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Youth readers. I like youth readers. That was great. Thanks, Emery. 
Uh, next Sunday after church, we will have a short uh, acolyte training for anybody who wants to be an acolyte who's not now, or anybody who wants a new or a different job acolyting, or uh, everybody else who might need a refresher, which is probably everybody. So um, uh, next Sunday after church, it won't take that that long. Wednesday nights are back up and running. We're doing that final press just like we are on Sunday mornings uh, toward the end of the uh, the program year. Miss Elizabeth is teaching, uh, 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 there you are, teaching confirmation classes for the younger folks while the Schusters are teaching it for the, for the older folks, for the adults. And um, uh, so Miss Elizabeth is not doing children's programming uh, for just a few more weeks, so we do have something for them, but having somebody with them while they're just right off of the parish hall in the church nursery would be a really good thing. So please, somebody step up for that. Uh, I, you know, I wanted to brag on one of our unsung, we have lots of unsung heroes, one of our unsung heroes who has really kind of bailed us out of a difficult spot in the last year, year and a half, and that is Elizabeth Heaston, who has been our, our treasurer. We were in a little bit of a mess uh, when she jumped in to take over, and take over she did, and she did a mighty fine job. And now because of the fine job that she has done, we've been, she's been able to pass that off to Robert Rigger, who now actually has all the information in front of him. He doesn't have to rebuild, recreate the wheel. Um, uh, so when you see Elizabeth, y'all thank her for doing that work. Uh, you know, I, I say, I do, I do this all the time. I say, come on and be the treasurer. There's nothing to it. Piece of cake, right? And it's a wonder she's still speaking to me after the mess that she uh, uh, that she stepped into. But we we are awfully thankful to her for uh, for doing that. There was one more thing before I introduce uh, someone to you. Oh, of course, uh, the grounds ladies really looks nice. Um, so. I understand that Genevieve hopped on the backhoe and yanked out hedges for us, which is awesome. Uh, awesome. And uh, thank you for the backhoe and thank you for the hard work that you all did, primarily the men, uh, the men's group, but not only the men's group yesterday. We had uh, all kinds of folks show up. Uh, and thank you. For, it was, it, yesterday was hard work, right? It was, it was ripping out shrubs, which I'd rather walk on my lips than have to rip out shrubs. So thank you all so much for doing that. We, I love that I can see that pink dogwood from the vesting room on Sunday mornings. Uh, and boy, haven't the dogwoods been just outstanding this year. Uh, they, a really good year for dogwoods. Uh, Y'all, let me introduce to you a really good guy, uh, Chris Cox. He's been a friend of Chris Teal's since they were in college, right? He is a member of St. B's, and he is our point person at JFK Middle for the Lego Club and the Clothes Closet and maybe some other things as well. I uh, want to introduce him to you. Great guy. And, um, and, I, and Chris, I hope you can tell us some other things that we might be able to do to, to help you all. Yeah. 
Thank you, Chris. Thanks so much. <laughs> so Chris took communion at uh, the 8 o'clock service, and I, you know, anytime there's somebody, especially in the 8 o'clock service, I'm watching them, right? Uh, and I noticed that he was a frequent flyer, so I asked him uh, afterwards, and he, he goes to St. B's. So uh, that, you know, there, there should be some kind, Chris, there should be some kind of partnership that we can get uh, going. Maybe we're not the only ones who can jump in. Uh, at, at maybe we can all take different schools or something like that. So thank you, Chris. We appreciate it. Um, the need is great at, at JFK uh, Middle, and so let's uh, we've got a we've got a good load ready to go uh, with them, and let's let's keep that up. It really is uh, making a difference out there. Are there any birthdays today? Is it today? Isn't it? Is it today? No, it was Thursday. Oh, it's Thursday. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Y'all both have birthdays the same week? No. Oh, y'all have been, y'all have been gallivanting. Y'all have been uh, in the frozen north. Didn't ask on I didn't ask. I usually don't ask on Easter Sunday. I get distracted. I'm sorry. Watch over your servants, almighty God, as their days increase and strengthen them where they stand. Lift them up if they are discouraged or sorrowful. And on that great last day, bring them with all of your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. We love y'all. Any anniversaries? Come on up, Cheneys. And Faunison's too. All right, y'all are in good company. Good folks. Good folks. How many years? 22. 22. 16. 16. All right, y'all win. All right. Almighty God, uh, watch over your servants as their days increase together. May their homes be a haven of blessing and peace. Uh, when they hurt each other, give them the strength uh, to, uh, to make amends and to live in peace uh, within your kingdom. And on that great last day, Almighty God, bring them to that heavenly country where they will reign and rejoice with your saints in light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pick a bride and kiss her. <laughs> Happy anniversary, y'all.
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.